Okay, so Extraction 2 is now out on Netflix, and the Chris Hemsworth action film has a lot in it we need to talk about. The film is one of the best one-shot action take scenes I've seen in a film, and in it we follow the characters as they blast their way through a prison, have an incredible car chase in the woods, and then shoot it out on a train whilst enemies try and surround them. It's balls to the wall, and the ending also leaves things off with a lot of possibilities for the future. Throughout this video, we're going to be breaking down what happens in it, what could happen next time, and also giving our thoughts on the film as a whole. Please hit the thumbs up button if you enjoy the video, and don't forget to subscribe for breakdowns like this every day. Without the way, huge thank you for clicking this, now let's get into Extraction 2. So the first film ended with a tease that Tyler was alive. In it we watched Ovi practicing holding his breath underwater, and a blurry figure could be seen looking directly at him. That doesn't happen in this film, we don't get it cleared up, but with that being set 8 months later, they might bring it back around at some point. However, we do see how Tyler survived the events of the first film, and that he was fixed up in hospital before getting given a new home. Here he's approached by a mysterious man who we know from the cast lists called Alcott, and he's played by none other than Idris Elba. Informing him that his ex-wife's sister needs rescuing from their gangster husband David, Tyler sets out to save the family and take down the mob. Now the plot is pretty straightforward, with this being more about the over-the-top action scenes that you can't take your eyes off. I've always loved one-shot takes, and to see what could basically be three major set pieces combined into one really elevates this movie. I think what works best about the scenes like this is that because we don't cut away, we very much feel like we're part of the action too. When it's this relentless, you can almost feel yourself getting exhausted along with the characters, and when it's over, you even breathe a sigh of relief yourself. At least, I, I do anyway, and if you're here without seeing the movie, then I'd definitely recommend that you go and watch it to experience what I'm talking about. Tyler kills David at the prison, and his brother ends up setting out on a vendetta against him. Tyler also learns that his wife Mia was actually behind hiring him, and the two are of course still torn up over the loss of their son. Tyler regrets leaving the pair before he passed away, and he's haunted by the idea that his son thinks he abandoned them in order to go and do work. To Tyler, his son saw him walking out the door, which he thinks means that he left him to die. However, Mia later explains that what he actually saw was his dad going off to help people, and his final thoughts of him would be that he was a brave man. Stuff like this really helps to recontextualise the character, and this movie is sort of about saving the son of someone else. This is seen in Sandro, who ends up reaching out to his uncle Zarab, and Tyler sets out to help bring him back. Now, Sandro gives up the location of the family and runs off with Zurab, which causes things to culminate in an Austrian church. With help from Nick, Rake manages to kill Zurab, and he saves Sandro, but they're not out the woods yet. Though Ketavan and her family are put into witness protection, Rake and Nick are put into prison, but that's not where things end. Offered somewhat of a get out of jail free card, Rake and Nick attempted with jobs working for a gnarly motherfucker. I love him. Now, who this could be, we don't know, but this does at least let us know we're getting more from the extraction universe. I can see them bringing in a big name actor for it, and to be honest, I didn't even expect Idris to show up in this. The Russo brothers, of course, have a lot of pull in Hollywood these days, and in case you don't know, the movies are based off the graphic novel Ciudad. Pro pro definitely pronouncing that wrong. Ciudad, I don't know, I'm sorry, because I am a moron, but this graphic novel was written by the Russo brothers along with Andre Park. Failed in geography as well, just point that out. Now the film sort of loosely pulled from it, and in case you don't know, it followed Tyler as he attempted to save the daughter of an imprisoned mobster named Eva Roach. Held hostage in Paraguay, he had to break her out of the city, and this played out much like the events of the first film. That changed Eva to Ovi, and then the prison scene sort of came across here, with Eva then being adapted into Mia's sister. Tyler in that was also American, but Chris gets to play Australian, which, you know what, it's nice to see him actually doing it for once. Now the graphic novel doesn't really tell us where things are going to go in the future, but I would love to see Eva herself become a character in the third film. We'll kind of bring things full circle, and be a great way to close out this trilogy. Now going back to Idris, he of course featured in the MCU, and he starred alongside Chris in the Thor films. The Russo brothers directed Infinity War, and the opening of that had Thor and Heimdall's final farewell with both Chris and Idris. Because of this, and I might be reaching, but I'd love to see the gnarly dude they reference being played by Tom Hiddleston. Now, Idris of course is from England, and with Hiddleston being there too, you can kind of imagine how the pair would get to know each other. Hiddleston hiring Idris to then work with Chris would be such a cool little meta thing, and we've seen how comic book movie stars have done stuff together on Netflix. So yeah, getting the Russos involved there as well, I think it would just work really well, but obviously, Rake and Nick don't know what they're getting themselves into. Now as for my thoughts on the movie, I really enjoyed it, and like I said, that one-shot thing was absolutely amazing. 
However, I did feel that the first half kind of bogged the movie down and I actually checked the time when they got to the prison and that was about 30 minutes in. The opening definitely could have been cut down as I feel the Hutton slower scenes that started things off didn't add that much for me. You can completely disagree but I think when you're making a movie that's meant to be an adrenaline rush it's best to start things off in a high and then get to the action as quickly as possible. Now saying that Hemsworth is really showing his capabilities here and the fact that he puts everything into his roles. If you've seen his show on Disney Plus then you'll know the guy could become the next Tom Cruise as he does a lot of death defying stunts and over the top things. Man will like dangle over a 50 foot gorge and walk out on skyscrapers and I'd love to see him bring more stuff like this to the movies. Now the side characters and family stuff does sort of bog down the film as I don't really feel like they get fully fleshed out and I didn't connect to them that much. I would have even taken flashback scenes with Tyler and his son to flesh out the pain he and Mia felt but that's mainly just spoken about whereas they get the focus. I think that in these types of movies the side characters aren't the important thing though as it's mainly the set pieces that you end up caring about. However I don't really feel like there's many people here knocking out the park acting wise and thus the scenes with them are you can kind of take them or leave them. It's the same for the plot in general as it is very predictable and by the numbers however like I said where this movie really strives is during its action scenes. They're second to none and up there with theatrically released movies so I'm surprised they keep opting just to send these straight to streaming when you could definitely tout this as a big IMAX event if you marketed it properly. So yeah, I think you kind of know what you're coming into with these films. And hey, you know, it sounds like I'm slagging them off, but I'm not mad at them, I promise. Actually, movies in general can often be criticised for their plots, but when you can see how much effort they've put into the film, it's hard to ding it for it. So overall, I, I, I might not have sounded like it, but I had a lot of fun with Extraction 2 and was pretty gripped when the movie was doing what it does best. I don't think it's going to be winning any Oscars. Well, well it might do for, for action, but... As far as giving me an enjoyable two hours, it definitely succeeded. I'm also very excited to see where things go in the future with Extraction 3, so it's done its job of getting me more invested in this franchise. In the end, Extraction 2 was great, and it scores a 6 for the plot, but a 9 for the action. So averaging that out, I think it's about a 7.5 out of 10, but depending on what sort of movie you're into, this is going to either improve it or reduce the score in your eyes. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below and if you want to support the channel for as little as 99 cents a month then please click the join button below and as a thank you you'll get early access to videos every week. You also have our merch store over at ZeroEdition.com which sells lots of nerdy inspired t-shirts, hats and more. We just launched a Secret Invasion slash Pulp Fiction inspired t-shirt so if you want to head over there and help us out then the link's in the description. Now if you want something else to watch and you're sticking on Netflix and we've got a breakdown of Black Mirror on screen right now. Season 6 has just dropped, we've got lots of things to talk about and hopefully I'll see you over there right after this. Without the way, huge thank you for sticking through the video. I've been your host Paul and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.